Hi, welcome to the channel and today I'm going to be showing you how to create a simple letterhead in Word. Now if you hold on to the end of the video I'll show you how to put this letterhead into the headers and footers if you want it to continue on to page 2, 3 etc. So let's go to insert, shapes, click on the drop down and let's choose a square and just click and drag out a rectangle. Don't worry too much about the size, we're just going to customize this rectangle. So with every shape that's inserted, it has a border line and a fill color. So once it's selected, go to shape format, go to this icon here, which is the border line, click on it, and I'm going to select no outline. Then for the shape fill, I'm going to select this dark blue color, but you can select any color of your choice. Now to copy and paste this rectangle, I can select it and hold down my Alt or Option key and then click and drag. Alternatively, you can just select it, go to the Home tab, select Copy, Deselect and press Paste and you'll then get another rectangle. So this rectangle here, I'm going to change the colour, so select it, go to Shape Format, go to Shape Fill, select Red and this one Go to Shape Fill, I'm going to select Grey. Then I'm just going to change the sizes of these rectangles. I'm going to put this one here. And then again, I'm going to put this one here. So I'm going to select these two here. To do that, I need to hold down my Command or Control key. Go to Align and select Align to Bottom and then go to send backwards and select centre back. Then go to group and I'm going to select group which means I group those two together. They've not quite joined so I'm going to select ungroup, just move that one over with my arrow key, hold down my command or control key, select the other one, go to group and select group. Now these two are together and you can move them left or right then I'm going to select these two rectangles and the blue one as well by holding down that command or control key. Go to group, select group and now all of these rectangles are one element. Now all we have to do is copy and paste this group. You can hold down your Alt or Option key, click and drag. Deselect them, reselect this one and just turn it around using this circular arrow key here. It should click at 180 degrees, move it down to the bottom. Now I need to make this blue rectangle here a bit wider. So I'm going to ungroup everything, then select this rectangle and just pull it down a little bit. Then I'm going to reselect everything with my command or control key and just click on all of those elements. Go to group and select group again. And now we've got one element. So that's the basics of the graphics. I'm now going to show you how to insert your logos and also your contact details. So for the logo, go to Insert, Picture, Picture from File. Then you can literally pick a logo of your choice and then press Insert. But for this particular one, I've just got it on my clipboard. So I'm just going to paste it in. And then down the bottom here, we'll want some contact details. So I'm going to go to Insert, text box, click on the drop down and select draw text box, click and draw a text box and then I'm just going to put in some contact details and if I deselect this box you can see we've got a black border line. If I move it to the bottom you can see we've got a white fill colour as well. So I'm going to get rid of both of those so select the box, go to shape format, go to outline, select no outline, shape fill, select no fill and we can move that down to the bottom and I'm going to go to the Home tab and go to the go to the font color icon and select white. And then all I need to do is copy and paste this. Now, don't copy and paste it until you've made all your adjustments. So if you want to change the font of this or the size of it, do that first, then copy and paste it. So let's say, for example, we wanted to change this to Helivecto, which is a very common font. Then once you're happy, select it, hold down the Alt or Option key, click and drag. Deselect, reselect this one, copy and paste. So this one, I'm just going to put my website in. Just extend it using the arrow keys and then this one. 
There we go. Now don't worry too much about spacing them out because we can do that all at the end. Now you can keep it like this once we've aligned it or you can have little icons next to it. That's completely your choice. So if you want the icons, go to insert and go to icons. Over here on the right, you'll see there's a search bar. So let's just type in phone. You can choose any of these. I'm gonna choose this one here. Click insert. You see it's at the top here. Now for this, I need to move it, so go to wrap text and select in front of text, and then you'll be able to move it, reduce the size of it, pop it down here, and then we're gonna change the color, so make sure you're on the graphics format. If this doesn't appear, it's because you haven't selected this icon. Go to graphics fill and select white, and then again for the next one, we'll go over to the search bar, and we'll type in globe. This will be for the website, Click insert, do exactly the same in front of text, go to the home tab, sorry, go to graphics format and select white. Don't worry about the sizes at the moment, we'll sort that out in a second. If you end up moving something else behind it, just use command or control Z to go back one step. And then for the next thing, we'll go to the search bar again and type in email and then I'll select this one click insert, wrap text in front of text, and then just go to white, and then again, move it down. So sometimes you have to do this by eye and choose the size of your icons, but you can also select them, go to graphics format, and you can use the height and width here to change the size. Make sure this is checked, otherwise the dimensions will change and it will stretch the icon out. So here, maybe I'll go for 1.5, press enter. If you struggle to select something, so you can see I'm clicking on this globe and I'm struggling to select it. If you're struggling, go to shape format, go to selection pane, and this is all of the different things that you've selected and inserted in your document. So to find out which one it is, you'll have to go through them and use this eyedropper tool here. And you can see as I've clicked on this one here, it's identified that globe. If I want to select it, I just click on it and now I can move it or I can go to graphics format, go along to the height, press 1.5 and press enter. Likewise with this one, I've managed to select that one. So again, I can go to 1.5, press enter and now they're all the same size. Now in terms of alignment, if we just scroll in, so it will zoom in using this slider at the bottom, what you'll need to do is to line up the text with your icon. Now you can see there's a slightly bigger margin or space at the bottom of this. So if I align to the center, you can see the text isn't quite aligned to the center of this box. So what you'll need to do is probably do this by eye. So move this text over to roughly where you think the center of this icon is. Then select the envelope or the other element, go to graphics format, go to group and select group. Then you'll find this is now all one element. We've got to do exactly the same with this one, ensuring there's a relatively similar gap or the same gap between the icon and the text. Now you've got them all grouped, you want them spaced equally apart. Select them all with the command or control key, go to align, go down to distribute horizontally, which will put an equal space between them all. Then go to the alignment tool, align them all to the middle. So they're all lined up according to the middle mark here. Then you can go to group and select group. Now it's all one group. We can simply go to graphics format, align, align to center. All right, let's zoom out now so we don't keep jumping down to the bottom of the page. Perfect. So once you've got all your contact de details at the bottom, we need to address the writing. But before we do that, you need to decide whether you want this just as a single page document, like it is now, or you want to put this in the headers and footers. Putting it in the headers and footers will gray this out. It will go a much more transparent color. But when you will want to print it or save it as a PDF, it will look like this. If you just want to send it as a Word document, it will be slightly grayed out. But I'll just show you how to do that and then we'll come back to putting the text in. So select everything, holding down the command or control key. 
select all those groups, go to graphics format, select group, then click group, go to home, click copy, then select cut, double click at the top of your page, you're now in your headers and footers, go to home and click paste. So now we need to do is just move that to where it originally was. And then you can double click back into the center of the page. You can now see it's grayed out because that's in the headers and footers. And we're now in our original document and we can begin to type. Now you will notice your cursor is here. So if I begin to type, then you're gonna get the text at the top here. Now you can just hit the return key and obviously go down the page as you see fit or you can go over to the rulers. If you can't see rulers, go to view and click on ruler. And then you can simply hover between the gray and the white section, click and drag, drag that down. And you can see your cursor now has moved down. So that's another way to do it. But I think when I come to write a letter, I want full customization, which will allow me to move the written text around. So I actually use text boxes. So if you go to insert, text box, draw text box, click and draw out a text box. Then insert your text. I'm just gonna copy in some text here. Now you can see my text is over to the right. And the reason for that is if you go to the home tab, I've selected this icon here, which is right alignment. If I deselect it, you can see we've still got this border line. So select the text box, go to shape format, outline, no outline, and then We'll just move this to where we want it. Now, by doing this, you really can move it anywhere around your document. And in addition, I'm gonna show you how to put the main text in. I'm gonna copy and paste this text box because we've taken out the border lines. I'm just gonna move this out. And then I'm just gonna select all of this text and delete it. I'm gonna to go to the Home tab, align to left. Then I'm just going to copy in the main body of our text. Again, I can move this around anywhere I want to. I can go to shape format, align, align to center so it's perfectly centered, but I can actually reduce the size of this box so I can include more text. I can reduce the size of my margins really easily and I can also move it up and down really easily as well. You can see there's still a white border at the back. If I want to get rid of that, just go up to shape fill and select no fill and then it will be transparent but you can see how this gives me full control over exactly where I want my text to be and exactly how it will look. Now this only really works if you want this on the first page. You can use a text box on the second page if you want to, just copy and paste it, but sometimes it's easier for you to allow the text to run onto the second page naturally, just typing in the document as you normally would. So once you're happy with your text, I'm just going to align that to the center and make sure you're happy with where your address is lined up. And then also you can see the logo here. I want to move it slightly inward to line up with my margin. So double click at the top, click on the logo. It's currently in a group with everything else. So go to shape format and ungroup everything, deselect everything and reselect the logo. I'm just gonna move it using my arrow keys and line it up with that margin. Double click back into the main document and here you can see the final product. So if you want to save it as a PDF, just go to File, Save As, go to File Format, click on the drop down, and select PDF. I'm going to save mine to my desktop. You can choose if you want it to be electronically distributed or whether you're going to print it. Just click Export. And here is the letter and how it looks for sending, emailing or printing. So I hope that's helped you today. If it has, please like and subscribe and have a great day.